combination of key passes from Morales and Nick Pascarella on the ground. Got a nine minute drive for the first field goal. The second field goal came after the safety. It was set up by a nice return from Vanden Kolk. Now they have this possession here to try and put the game away. It was a quiet Carlsbad sideline in the first half. In this second half, the crowd has come alive. From the 42, Pascarella dropped immediately. Stedman Slaughter in there again. Jacob Driver as well. Pascarella now with 10 carries for just about 50 yards here in the second half. That spirit on display. Carlsbad being the number one team in the county and the number seven team in the state, always a good crowd on hand. Lasu is the man in the slot here, second down and nine, clock running. Handoff. See Snarrows, his first carry of the day. This end around has been strung out, and once again, when you try and make an end run, LCC is quick to the sideline. Yeah, and Cisneros did a good job of staying in balance to keep the clock moving. But you're right, Craig, that play has not worked at all today for Carlsbad. That's one of the staples of this offense so far this year. LCC has been stringing it out all day. And Jacob Driver was there to finish it. Good play by Carl Nelson, though, the junior defensive back. He's the man who plugged that up the field gap. Now and third and long. to bounce. Little bit of rain starting to fall, just barely a sprinkle. That's a report from our sideline cameraman. Honestly, I don't see it yet. Big third down play here, third and long. Third down and seven. Fake the handoff, under pressure, and down goes Morales. It was Aaron Hemi in the senior it was really a defensive line meeting at the quarterback in the backfield. Perhaps the worst possible thing other than a turnover that could have happened to Carlsbad on that play. They lost yardage all the way back to the 35 yard line. Now they're gonna have to punt the ball away with still four minutes, a ton of time remaining on the clock. They were not able to grind it out on that drive, only taking two minutes off the scoreboard. Well, this is not going to be a fake punt after a loss of 10 on that sack by Hemian. Huge play. And now it's Tommy Porter ready to kick, and it's Connor Garrett ready to receive. No pressure on the punter. Garrett's going to let this one drop and roll. It's going to bounce and trickle to about the 28-yard line. And that's where LCC sets up needing just a field goal. 334, ladies and gentlemen, here at Sweet Kirschmar Field. The Lancers unbeaten in 24 consecutive games. That streak is in jeopardy right now. LCC has a very good chance here. You couldn't ask for more than three and a half minutes and a chance to go 70 yards to try and set up a field goal. Both kickers have made from 37 yards, which means you only need to get to the 20-yard line. Only about 50 yards here in three and a half minutes for LCC. Bowler's got T.C. Whaley right behind him in a tight set. Looking for Whaley on the sideline. Grabs it to the 32, cuts inside. Vanden Kolk there along with Ewing to bring him down at about the 35-yard line. A nice gain on first down. Yes, it is, but the clock is still moving. Let's go down to the sidelines where Courtney has an injury report. Well, guys, you saw Carlsbad's quarterback, Justin Morales, being stretched out on the sidelines a few minutes ago. I asked Carlsbad's team doctor, Larry Dunsing, if everything was all right, and he said, yes, this is just one of those games where a little extra stretching is definitely needed. Guys. Morales got stretched out by Hemi and almost got taken off on a stretcher last possession. Now Moeller under pressure by Searson. Up the middle, ball skips in to Nelson. That's going to be an incompletion. incomplete. Joey Searson coming on the blitz. Jose Moeller lucky to escape with his life after being pressured from the far sideline by Joey Searson on the linebacker blitz. Boy, anytime you see the Whoa. top of the back of the quarterback's shoulder pads dirty, you know he's been hit a couple of times hard. Well, that's a scary sight. The clock does stop, though, on the incompletion. Third down and two from their 35 with 2.45 to play. Is this four downs no matter what, Jack? It has to be. It has to be. Down by one. Nelson and Whaley in the backfield. The Moeller's going to throw. He's under pressure. Up the middle. He's got his man. There's Curtis Hadzicki. 
and does the clock keep running? He was trying to get out of bounds. And it'll stop momentarily for them to move the chains. Had Zicky with his first reception of the ball game after three touchdowns last week in the win over Miro Mesa. Huge play from Hadziki, the senior, and it couldn't come at a bigger time. And Muller did a great job to escape again on that play. Carlsbad is bringing the house every time. Gain of six and a first down from the 41. Moeller, five-step drop. Under pressure, scrambling left, throws. Oh, out of the hands of Kenny Stills, incomplete. Well, Stills was right there on the sideline. He may have even been stepping out of bounds on that play. He was so close to the sideline. The clock does stop with 2.28 left. Eight, seven Lancers. Carlsbad, if they do escape here, getting by real close, keep the streak alive. LCC with a huge chance for the upset still. We saw them challenged two weeks ago on their home field by Cathedral Catholic. That was a three-point win. Carlsbad sloppy first half. Are they going to pay for it with their first loss in two years? LCC still needs 40 yards at field goal range. Second down, tip ball, and it finds the turf harmlessly. A tip accounted for LCC's only seven points tonight. I was just gonna mention, it looked just like that one. A tip ball right at the line of scrimmage, up for grabs. Chase Wick got a paw on it. Big defensive end, Wick. And here's just another great case of awareness. If you're not gonna hit the quarterback, it <laughs> hit him on the head. I think it hit Steven Simpson hey. on the head, actually. Right place, right time. Simpson at 6'6", a pretty big target. That, that counts. Absolutely. Moeller, third and 10 coming from the 40-yard line. He's under pressure from Searson, throws it. It's intercepted! Pascarella's got it! Nick Pascarella comes up with a streak-saving interception down the sideline. That should do it, Craig. Pascarella didn't have his best game running the football, but how about the defensive play from the secondary to keep that one alive? The fourth turnover of the day for LCC, and this one might be the dagger. Jose Moeller just one of seven in the second half and the interception there. And Pascarella with a nice job of hanging on to that ball. He's an offensive player going two ways. He's got the gloves back there. It's like having the hands team back out there. You have a guy who's used to catching the football in your secondary. Well, Moeller was going for stills and overshot him by about six yards. Not a good throw. First and 10 now from the LCC 42, and you know where this ball's going. It's going to go backwards five yards and a false start. That's where it's going. Again, penalties. Penalties, penalties. A ton of them on both sides, in particular on La Costa Canyon. There's if, the false start. If LCC comes away with this with a loss, having led 7 0 at the half and having only perhaps fallen by one, they're going to look at penalties, they're going to look at four turnovers and say, we had a chance as the number 10 team to beat. Carlsbad here tonight. Tell you what else they're going to look at, Jack. They're going to look at the last play of the first half, a 34-yard field goal that was blocked. Great call, Craig. In a one-point game, it all matters. Cisneros and Pascarella. Nick's got the ball. Nick's going down hard. Big tackle right there from Aaron Hemian again. Are the Mavericks going to start calling timeouts? I believe they have here with 2.10 left. There it is. It's a timeout. Jacob Driver's slow to get up right now. And that, are they going to make this an official's timeout? Darren Brown's out on the field. Taking a look at his very steady junior linebacker. And it is a timeout for the Mavericks. So now Darren Brown out on the field coaching his defense. That's the first of three timeouts. And you know, you talk about little plays in this game, Jack. I'll go back to that last drive of the first half where the Mavericks had a little bit less time than they would have liked to maybe punch it in for a touchdown because they wasted a timeout on their very first drive when they came out shaky with not knowing formation, not having the right people in the game. Uh, all of these things are adding up in a one-point game. Yeah, you're right. It was like the second play of the game on the very first drive that they called that timeout, came back to haunt them on the missed field goal, the block at the end of the first half. Hey, don't forget this exciting game and all of our high school sports coverage available on demand. 
Just go to the local sports tab, select the game you want to watch, and simply push play local programming for you when you want to watch it. That's on demand, available on Time Warner Cable. Digital video recording devices changing all of our viewing habits. Second down and long, Pascarella up the middle, trying to just push his way through and keep the clock spinning. And now another timeout called by LCC. And that's their second one. Pascarella with a short gain there. He's at 67 yards so far here tonight on 22 carries, Craig. He averaged 108 yards of ball game coming in just at 67. If you live in the North County, tune in on Friday and Saturday to CNN Headline News for Time Warner Cable Headline News. Courtney Dwyer and the local headline news team bring you the latest happenings in San Diego's North County at 54 minutes past the hour. Time Warner Cable Headline News, available only on Time Warner Cable Channel 30. So one timeout left now for the Mavericks. And they call that second one there with just 205 remaining. You know, a lot of these Lancer players are out there with a heavy heart today. One of their teammates from last year, Brock Butler, his sister Michelle passed away today. A moment of silence observed before the game. Lance is trying to pay tribute with a victory tonight. Pascarella up the middle on third down. Bull rushes to the 35. He'll be stopped there. Time for one more timeout for LCC. They can burn them all on defense here. And get the ball back. Yes, now Carlsbad is going to have to punt here on third down and long. As you mentioned, Michelle Butler passing away. Brock Butler now at UC Davis, the CIF, North County, and Avocado League Defensive Player of the Year last year. So no timeouts now for the Mavericks. They've used all three. But other than that, Jack, this really couldn't have gone much better. Uh, Carlsbad, after the interception, taking over at the Mavericks 42 with a chance to run out the clock and win this game. And instead, it's three plays. It's a penalty, three short runs, three timeouts. Now on fourth down, LCC certainly anticipating a punt here. And out comes the punt team now. Well, this is two opportunities that Carlsbad has had to grind out the clock, and they have not done so. Had a chance with six minutes left, only took two minutes off the clock. Had another chance after the interception, as you say, and took less than two minutes off the clock on this drive. It's fourth down and four. You don't think they fake it again, do you? No, I don't, I don't take that chance here. Well, Hurd's part of the blocking crew there, along with Jordan Garcia and David Cisneros. If the ball gets to him, Tommy Porter will punt it. The ball gets to him, Connor Garrett will return it. Hits to Porter. He kicks it. Short, high kick. That's going to bounce. It's going to bounce backwards. And finally, Carlsbad touches it as it rolls across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Heard on the coverage. So that's where LCC sets up. 16-yard line, 147. No timeouts left. Their quarterback, Jose Moeller, ice cold in the second half. And yet... Despite everything that's happened in this game, Jack, four turnovers and so many penalties and mistakes, the Mavericks, if they can hit one big play, could break Carlsbad Street. They need 64 yards to get into field goal range here in a minute 47 without timeouts, but all they can ask for is a chance. And Moeller drops back. No pressure. Stepping up now. Hit by Simpson, and down he goes. Great coverage. Barber, Vanden Colt downfield, denying the pass attempt, and Steven Simpson comes in to stuff the play. Well, Vanden Colt had great coverage on Kenny Stills, but it was one-on-one -on -one coverage. I don't know what Jose Moeller was waiting for on that play. You have to take the chance here, down by one, as the clock continues to tick away. Call it a one-yard gain, actually, for Moeller. Now Moeller rolling to his left. With a man blocking, he's going to run. No timeouts, holding that ball out there, out to the 30-yard line. That's a first down, it'll stop the clock to move the chains. That's right, so a heads-up play by Moeller. He scrambles for 12, and he gets the ball to the 30. They only need 50 yards now to get in the field goal range. Gain of 13 for Moeller, their leading rusher on the season. He's going to need a pass. It's going to be a big-time play. Absolutely. Can't just run it here. Nope. No chance. Clock's at one minute. One minute to play in the Carlsbad City rivalry. Defense, defense. 
Moeller, surprised by that snap, stepping up. Now he's going to have to run. 35, dancing, 40-yard line. He's spun down. Is that going to be enough to move the chains? It looks like it. If it does, it stops the clock momentarily again. Yes, it does. First down at the 41-yard line. Well, that's two scrambles for 10 yards from Jose Moeller. He has stopped the clock twice. Again, he's going to need that big pass play, but at least right now he's taking away chunks of yardage. Clock running 42 seconds. Now inside 40 seconds. Moeller's ready. Low snap. He bobbles it. It's on the ground. Moeller picks it up. He's sacked. The clock spins. Chase Wick got in there. 30 seconds to play now. And the Mavericks have to run just to get back across the line of scrimmage. Moeller's under center. He'll spike the ball. So the clock stops 22.9. But second down is Burns setting up third down and 15. All right, two chances here to get 15 yards for the first down. But LCC still needs to get to the 20 yard line of Carlsbad to get even in field goal range for the attempt to win it. Time running out on the Mavericks chance for an upset bid here. Third down and 15. Jose Muller had one huge pass in the second quarter. It went to Kenny Stills. Stills does have three touchdown receptions this year. He's our leading receiver at 132 yards. Curtis Hadziki had three touchdown receptions last week against Mira Mesa. Nobody else has caught a touchdown pass this year from Moeller. And this defense is not Mira Mesa. It's Carlsbad, it's fierce, and it's coming after Jose Moeller on third and 15. Penalty, a penalty. Penalty on LCC. May have had 12 men on the field oh there, Craig. Goodness. Let's see here. I believe Stephen, or check that, uh, Matt Williams is trying to get off the field. We'll see what the call is. Oh, this is just a killer. They've put the ball at the 35. What? No penalty? No, no penalty. wave off the flag. Wow. Just stop everything. Matt Williams was jumping off the field as the ball was being snapped. All right, so that just cost him .5 seconds, that's all. Moeller, no pressure. He's going to have to run. He didn't stay in the pocket, and Steven Simpson drags him down. Clock running, 48 seconds to play. Fourth down, it's got to be a Hail Mary. They can't do anything else. Two, one, and the streak is alive. Carlsbad survives. Eight to seven, the final score. This play is not happening. The game is over. Make it 25 games unbeaten, shakily so. Wow, and that could have been a ban on the field play there. That pass was completed to Stills, but it didn't count. And the streak is alive. 25 straight games without a loss. The Costa Canyon two years ago beat Carlsbad. They couldn't pull it off here today despite a gutsy effort from their defensive side of the football. Their offense with four turnovers and so many penalties could not come up with any points. The Carlsbad High Noon Rotary Club Cup will stay on the campus of Carlsbad High School. The Lancers barely beat their crosstown rivals from La Costa Canyon eight to seven. And that was a weird ball game. It was a strange ball game to be sure. And for so much criticism that we put on both offenses in the first half and then on LCC's offense again in the second half, let's give credit to both defenses. Absolutely. Both of these defenses were so impressive. Let's begin with LCC. Their ability to string out the plays. Carlsbad could not run their standard traditional offense with Pascarella. He was limited to just 70 yards on the day. They were able to get in the backfield and then Carlsbad. Same as always. Fierce defense in the backfield, penetrating. Searson had another great day. They forced four turnovers from LCC. Both defenses played so well. And the biggest play of the ball game was the fake punt for 18 yards that Bob McAllister called, setting up the game-winning field goal from Jose Hernandez. We'll sort through the flotsam and jetsam of this one. When we return, the Lancers survive 8-7 on Time Warner Cable Sports. The Rotary Cup is in the hands of the Carlsbad Lancers. Eight to seven, they beat La Costa Canyon with Courtney Dwyer and Jack Cronin. I'm Craig Elston. Jack, 
three parts to a football team offense defense and special teams defense and special teams came through huge tonight for the Lancers we'll detail it all in a moment but first here's Courtney standing by with one of the special teams heroes Jackson Hurd who was responsible for the fourth down fake tonight that basically led to the field goal that won the game what were you thinking when you got that ball what am I doing? <laughs> I really did. Like, I didn't know what I was doing, but it was a real tough game, and uh, I had to make a big play, and uh, the line and everybody blocking did a good job. And you came through. Was it a play you were agonizing about this week? No, actually, we did not practice this play this week that much, but uh, we needed a big play, and uh, Matt called the right play, and we did the right thing. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Jackson. Congratulations, you guys. All right, guys, that'll do it down here on the field. Back to you. Great job all night long, Courtney Dwyer. What an honest and unexpected answer from Jackson Hurd. What am I doing? I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, he, he figured out what to do, and Nick Pascarella knows what to do with the Rotary Cup. There it is, the trophy, and a hard-fought and well-deserved trophy right there for Carlsbad. I and mean, these guys played so hard, in particular on defense. It was Pascarella's interception instead of his ground game that got the victory sealed here tonight. Darren Brown talking to his team. He's got to love their effort, their resilience tonight. That defense did not break one time this evening, to be honest with you. I thought they were even most impressive on the drives where Carlsbad wound up with field goals because they were getting pushed back on their heels, and somewhere they found that resolve to stay in there. But you know what? This game comes down to a blocked field goal and a bad snap on punts that turns into a safety. That's the difference between an upset win for the Mavericks and this Lancer loss. That's right, and you had the, the safety on the high snap on a punt attempt, the blocked field goal. Either one of those two doesn't happen, and LCC probably gets an upset here tonight as the number 10 team in San Diego County over the number one team in San Diego County. Here's the high snap, and you can see uh, as we had the five foot six punter in Bobby Zuld, uh, Zulud, the sophomore, standing in his own five yard line. Zulud has the ball go over his head. It goes out of bounds, two points, and Carlsbad got the ball back after that. And the blocked field goal ended the first half. So uh, a weird game. It was 7 0 LCC at the half. It was eight to seven with eight minutes and seven minutes to play in the fourth quarter. And that's where it stayed. A huge interception by Nick Pascarella that stunted the last Mavericks drive uh, that had really any gumption to it. Carlsbad's offense has a lot of work to do moving forward here and going into conference play. Conference play begins for both these teams next week, Jim. That's right, LaCosta Canyon has Westview on the road. And Carlsbad with two tough road games on the road at Oceanside, currently the number four team in San Diego County, and on the road at El Camino, the team they tied for the Amicano League Championship last season. Oh, we want to thank everyone involved uh, in making this broadcast possible tonight, live on Time Warner Cable Sports, including our all-star spotter, Kieran Anderson, here in the booth. Great job. Great job to Courtney on the sidelines, Ned Augustenberg, and the rest of our crack Time Warner Cable Sports crew. For Jack Cronin and Courtney Dwyer, I'm Craig Elston. Signing off, we'll talk to you next Thursday with LCC Girls Volleyball. Tonight, the Mavericks football team can't get the upset. Carlsbad scores the win 8-7. to seven. Good night.